One of the jobs that I dislike doing as an angler is taking line off your reel. This line was put on this spool last year. This spool saw three days of fishing. It was my spare, my backup spool. This reel has no line. I'm going to do what's called back winding. Now, could I get away with fishing with this, this line? Yeah, I probably could. However, I'm going to back wind from this spool to that one. Therefore, the fresh line at the bottom of the spool has been used again. Back winding. It just means that you get more life out of your mono. Unfortunately, I had a bit of an incident on Saturday or Sunday when I was last out and lost a little bit of line and a trace and a boat. Hopefully it has uh, mixed shits a hedgehog, but we're digressing. Normally, when you're taking line off your reels, it is an absolute pain in the backside. So, I can happily recommend this product. It is the carp spool, or the carp something, carp, spirit, D spool line stripper, and it retailed at seven quid, plus two pound delivery from wherever it came from. It fits onto a battery drill, and you just attach the line, spin it round, and once you, this thing's got a clutch built into it, so it's actually really quite good. I'll move it away from my face so you can see what I'm talking about. And I've disturbed the dust. Magic. Say you have a line stopped in your reel, the clutch stops it, so the clutch doesn't, it doesn't, you know, fucking rip the reel out of the rod and trash things. So that's pretty good. When you're finished, it's just a case of unscrewing the top and taking the light off, throwing it in the bin, putting it on the, the reel again, and away you go. So this is actually pretty good. The Carp Spirit D-Spool Line Stripper. Great product, with all seriousness, good product. So now I'm going to take the line that's on this spool and wind it onto this spool. Now I have to do this. Uh, I have four reels and they all need back spooled. <sighs> I've been putting this job off because it's kind of crap. But has to be done, has to be done. I'm running out of spare. Spare rods and reels, and if the worst comes to it, then I just re-spool up with some new mono. I've got spools of this sitting. This is the Nash Bullet stuff. It's pretty good. I use the 20 pound stuff. Uh, that's the green stuff. What's on that reel is the brown stuff. It doesn't look, you know, ordinarily, you know, magically any more brown than the other line, I guess. Uh, the green stuff. I guess the green stuff has a slight tinge to it. Just a little slight tinge. Can you see the difference? No. Anyway, one's brown and one's meant to be green. The original Nash bullet that came out was awesome mono. I used it. I used to have great faith in it, but it kind of disappeared when off the market. Well, this is their their latest. You know, rehash of it. I think that's the word, correct word, remake of it. I bought about I bought about ten spools of it and down to my last three bulk spools. So the testing of that so far has actually been pretty good. Excuse me, some of the places I fish are very zebra mussel infested, and this line's actually standing up to it quite well. Uh what more can I say? It's not so bad. I'm happy to kind of say I use it. It's not so bad. I used to use a, a P line. From a company, I will get that in America. The catfish guys used it, and it was also pretty good. So, but at the minute, that's the monofilament that I'm using. Yes, I use braid, but I use monofilament as well. My fishing tends to be everything that I can cast is classed as bank to medium distance. So you have short, which is at your feet. Now, don't underestimate the margins for pike, because they'll quite happily sit underneath your feet. 
and you know you'll be there trying to cast to the horizons and you're casting over fish so don't neglect the margins with mono because mono stretches if i can cast to it then that's about as far as i want it to go anything further than casting distance whether i'm dropping it off with a bait boat or i've got somebody in a blow-up boat that's taking it out for me and dropping it onto a spot i'm using braid i'm using either 55 pound braid or 85 pound braid that's power pro that's uh i get it in big bulk spools i can't remember the, the exact how many meters is on it but i get it from the states and it's big bulk spools that can fill uh well it felt well one of them one of them managed to fill the five of these and one of my big pits so it was quite quite a lot of bread you know that was the 50 pound stuff so quite a lot of bread but that's today's job isn't it just an exciting life that we all lead i've also got to do some other bits and pieces and i'm going to do some uh, housekeeping on a spod rod you might ask why do i have a spod rod well to spod things or to cast heavy leads at boats that go over your lines however when i was using the spod rod during the summer to fish for the bream where i'm spotting out uh big feeders and stuff there was a bit of damage to one of the eyes in the road now the road itself cost 50 quid to get that eye replaced the quotes the cheapest quote i got was 85 pound so no i'm not spending 85 pound to get a a rod you know get the butt eye put onto a rod so i'm going to budget in the finest of fine ways with some epoxy glue it's the back of the eye has uh, a little bit of the, the ceramic has chipped off it there's no point in the eye where the braid that's touching it will get wrapped around it it's just like the back of the eye has come off i'll i'll show you a video not a video i'll show you a photograph of it before i start dicking around with the epoxy so give me two minutes to set that up yes i'm not sure how the light's going to work here or if you can see it but just in there there's the littlest there's the the lip of the the inside of the eye has uh basically separated or cracked it cracked off during the cast which was a bit a bit weird i'm not sure what i was doing wrong to make it to make it break in the cast perhaps it's a design flaw with fox but it was a, a rod that was being sold at a discount price you know 50 quid so i'm not going to argue with it i'm certainly not going to pay to have the the eye re put on the cheapest quote i got for that was 80 quid so i'm not going to pay 80 quid to fix the uh the, the bottom eye and a, a spot road that costs 50 quid free delivery so what i'm going to do i'm going to fill this little crack in this little dividend with everyone's favorite the old gorilla glue gorilla glue is actually really really good this is the epoxy stuff that kind of it's like the old araldite if any of these remember araldite but it's uh it's five minute epoxy you know it's going to basically be rock solid in five minutes and if i can get the bubbles away come on bubbles I don't need a, a lot of it and it's important to pull the whatever back when you're when you're not using it that way the friggin thing doesn't glue up and get stuck up and it even comes with its own recap there we go happy days there we go gorilla glue Gorilla epoxy glue. And it really smells. So you have your little blob of gorilla glue and you just mix it around. 
Again, it's just a case of mixing it till it's a one consistency. It looks dead dodgy what I'm doing with this arm, doesn't it? I'm mixing glue, perverts. So you end up with glue is like that consistency. My god, it really does look like I was doing something I've seen with that arm, doesn't it? And then it's a case of putting the the glue into the crack here. We're just getting all of the double entendres, aren't we? If I can pick up the little pin thing, be good. I have a little pin. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill this in. That's not going to be any good. I'm going to have to do it over this day. And there we have it. That will do. I'm not even sure if you guys can see that. You're bound to be able to see the glue on top of it. Looks like somebody's been putting glue or epoxy on it. So that is the spod rod fixed for all the, the use that my spod rod will get during the winter season. Let me just see if I could take this off of this. Hold on. There we go. I turned auto focus off. That'd be magical. Now the thing won't be kind of going boom. Okay. Stupid webcam. This is obvious that the next day, yesterday, you saw me kind of uh, working like this and like paying a lot of attention to stuff that you couldn't see off camera, which was awesome. I'm going to have to improve my, uh, my video skills, but I'm going to show you a photograph now of the eye of the rod with the epoxy set hard. So that should work right about now. See, it can be fixed. Now, ultimately, if the rod goes tits up and it ends up, that eye pops out. I'm not going to spend £80 to get a new eye put on. I'd probably just buy a new 50 quid cheap spot rod. And then send a stern letter to Fox saying your, your rods are crap. But we'll see. We'll see if the cheap, uh, we'll see if the epoxy has fixed it. Because it was on sale and because it was off, off the uh, the eBay, I don't think there's any point going to the seller saying the eye is cracked in the road. They're probably just going to laugh at you and say, "Ha ha, sucker!" But that's it. You know, life's a gamble. Shit happens. Going to show you something else as well. Without trying to, as you can see, I filled this reel up yesterday. Now, to the naked eye, it looks cool, looks good. But you'll notice that the line is coming up at an angle. Can you see it? That means that the line is set, that there's like washers inside this little cap. Like uh, these things that Shimano send you in your reels. If you buy Shimano reels like I do, you're going to have loads of these lying around. But what happens is with these type of spools, it's on the big pit spools as well, but on these, the, the 10,000 type of spools, it's not really something that happens. In fact, this is the only spill I've ever seen it happen on. So what that makes me think is there is too many washers inside here. So they're going to take this off and take one of the washers away. And over time, that should level itself out. I mean, you can see that there is like a definite definitely when it goes up it's heavy at the top but it's still at the bottom you want it on a nice level this line is brand new by the way it's this, this, this stuff that I put on last night so it hasn't bedded into the rail either which is why it's slightly overfilled you want your line to basically be sitting so it's level with the lip 
if it's sitting, if the spool's half empty when you go to cast, you're losing distance because there's too much drag. So let's take this apart and we will see what we can see. Eh? It's that easy. You just unscrew the plastic top. Taking the plastic top off. Be careful that you don't lose the little button that's in it. That little button. You need that. Don't lose that. Put that back in its hole. And you can see that there is a washer on the inside there. So that washer, you can hear it. That washer needs to come out. So we we'll take away that washer, put that into the bag with the other washers, and what that will do is that will lower the spool down so when it's winding, the reason it goes high at the top is because the spool is sitting too high and the line lay is basically loading everything at the top. So you want to lower it down so it's laying it even. So that washer basically leaves, it should leave it at the right sort of height. But if it doesn't, you can see in there, if I move it around, there's a little wire uh, grommet thing, and then there's another couple of washers. So you could take the wire. This is this is what goes onto the the main shaft of your reel. It's connected to the rod. I'm not going to lift the rod up because I'm going to end up smashing a light or something. But you could take that out and take the washers out to lower it down even more. But I'm hoping the one washer should be enough. The other Shimano reels I've looked at, they only have one washer in them, so I have no idea why this one came with two, but hey-ho. And then it's just a case of screwing it back together. So you take a little, mostly try not to put any crap or dirt or anything into it. So you just plop your little button in. Again, it's in between those two little bits of wire, so you can press it up and down. That acts like a spring. I'm not going to say it's a spring because it's the weirdest shape of metal ever. And then you just put your cap, it's covered in dirt, back on. This is the, and you just tighten it with your hands. There we go. And there you have the button at the top. You should be able to press it, and it should be able to pop back up again as that pops back up. That opens the rail off the rail, that opens the spool off the rail, and then that button, you hear a click when you push it back onto the rail. So that should sort out that issue. If it doesn't, then we can take out another washer, and it's just a case of fiddling around till you get the right sort of level of the rails that you want. This, the, the rails themselves, I, I'm actually a fan of these rails. I tended to buy Shimano rails from the get-go because Shimano were definitely they made they made quality products and I'm just going to move this over here and wind this slack line back on. Stop spinning off the rail. Oh no, I caused a tangle! Back in a second. And we're back. Bit of a mistake there, bit of a schoolboy error. When you tighten mono, fresh mono to a rail spool, it's put under tension. So when you release the tension, the mono is a little bit excitable. It tends to kind of want to go out and see you, you know. It's like a a teenager, when it sees its first pair of boobs, it just doesn't know what to do, so it just wants to go woof. That caused a bit of a tangle. So, we have it sorted out now. Everything's cool. Like I said with the washers, I have them all in this little box. This box contains a lot of different things like uh, memory cards and card readers and, you know, little things, little handy box to have. This lives by my PC, so it's going to get put back where it, where it normally lives. So if I ever need the washers again, I know where they are. I, the boxes that the rails came in, the, the boxes that the big pits came in, 
the, it took a bit of a kick in the postage, so the boxes were no good to me. So everything in the box was transferred to that little plastic thing. The XTEA rails that I got when I got them, they didn't have to come in a box. The guy that I bought them off, you know, where they were, they came in one big massive box to save postage, which at the time I didn't mind, but it, he just kind of bundled spare spools and bubble wrapped them. He bubble wrapped the rails and put it into one big box. So instead of getting six individual boxes, I got one massive box. And there we go. So I don't have real boxes for the, my, my normal bit runners. So the reel is now back on the rod where it lives. Back on the rod. These little things here are called John Roberts rod vans. Now John Roberts doesn't make these anymore. You get special ones for the top and you get special ones for the bottom. They're soft plastic. They don't damage the rods or mark the rods in any way. They just clip the rod together, which is dead handy. Now, top tip, if you're on eBay or wherever and you see John Roberts rod bands, buy them. They're a couple of quid, but they make, they make life so much easier. You know, they, I have them on all my rods, on specimen rods, and it's, it's brilliant. It keeps the rods together. You know, <laughs> we used to use elastic bands back in the day, and elastic bands would snap, they would get wet and corrode. Whereas those things there were brilliant for a couple of quid. So, top tip, John Roberts rig bands, or not rig bands, rod bands. If you see them on the internet, do yourself a favour and buy them. I have a bit of a stockpile of them, and no, they're not for sale. So, we've done the line for the rails. We have... Hopefully fixed the uh, the real kind of the line lay, so it's not kind of like that. It should be like that after a day it's been used. And I've shown you how to use the uh, the line spool taker off thing. You know, brilliant little gadget for seven quid. The top just pops off. When you're going to put the line on it, you trap the line in the, the lid. There you go, on the drill, spin it round. When you put your line on it, it's just a case of undoing that. And this is like a Teflon coated, so nothing sticks to it. Did you like that motion? Yeah, I know what you're thinking, deviants. So your line just comes off. I'm lucky I have an open fire here, so the line just gets through in the fire. If I lived somewhere where my rubbish was going straight to landfill, then obviously you would you'd cut it in half. I'm going to do the hand movements, but the hand movements are always off camera. So I'm going to have to learn to start doing the hand movements up here. So you guys can see what I'm doing, as opposed to just, you do the hole and there's only one friggin' arm moving. But that's all the top tips. And... Uh, general buffoonery I have today so uh, I'll bid you farewell oh thanks for all the new subscribers as well by the way you guys are awesome I got asked the question why I put the ads on my channel well that's simple a I am dirt poor uh, literally dirt poor <laughs> And B, any money that this this channel makes will go to buying like uh, probably a new computer, because the one that I'm using, kind of you have to kind of kick it to make it work properly. And video editing is a bit of a pain in the backside. So if anyone knows of a cheap, cheerful, decent PC that does the old video editing, then uh, let me know because the one I have is a bit rubbish. Also, um, to make the actual movies, I'm using Windows uh, Movie Maker, which is, again, it's it's not the best either. So if you, anyone knows like a free software or free Movie Maker software out there that I can download, then uh, do me a solid and let me know which one it is. Now, obviously, I don't want to download something that's going to kill my computer with like loads of crap ads and spam and rubbish. If I can get something that I can, that's easy to work with, I'm not exactly Steven Spielberg here, but something that's 
relatively simple to use and can make the uh, the YouTube videos a bit better, then I'll take a look at it. But any help in that department would be awesome. I'm not the uh, the the best with the old the old technology. Until next time, chaps. See you later.